Good morning, everyone, and I am glad to be here with you today, at least in spirit, if not physically with you. I've had to record the message for today as I am at work myself, so I hope that you find this service to be a bit of a, an enjoyable one with multiple people contributing. But it is still a worship service, however, whatever format we're in, it is still one that we have gathered together for. Now, usually I would lead you off with a reading from a psalm, but today, instead of that, you're going to be singing a psalm, and I hope that you enjoy it. But I would like you to think about the message that it actually says, as it talks about a shepherd. So we turn to our prayers. Living Lord, we gather together in this Easter season to celebrate the joy of resurrection. We proclaim together that Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we give you thanks and praise, blessing and honour. Living Lord, we gather together in this Easter season to declare that we are your church. That wherever we are, at home, at work, doing our daily exercise, working in the garden, in hospital. Wherever we are, we are your people and you are our Lord and we praise your name. Living Lord, we gather together in this Easter season to proclaim your message, to grow together, and to learn more of you. 
we give thanks for your great love. And we acknowledge that we are not always the people you would have us be. So we lay before you those times this week when we have fallen short of the mark. We ask that you will bring good from even our failures and that you will so work in us that we grow nearer and more like you. So, living Lord, as your people, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we have uh, the reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, reading from the first verse. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name 
and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. The Good Shepherd. It's another name that we give Jesus, is it not? The reading today is just one of many times that we actually hear the metaphor of the shepherd being used, not only by Jesus, but by others as well. The one that I always remember quite frequently is Ezekiel and his use of the shepherd to let the people know about their new king and what their new king's behaviors would end up being. It's an older passage, time at a time when most of the Israelites were in captivity, but it is still a metaphor and one that can give hope. And I hope that you find hope in the reading that we had today. But let's look first at what the main function of a shepherd is. What that person does is to make sure that none of the flock become hurt or suffer. None are left without food, water, or shelter. And none are lost. But most of all, none are taken by the predators. The flock is to be together, to stay together and to hopefully grow with time. The flock know the voice of the person that's looking after them. They sense that person is the one that will make sure they are safe. Isn't that what we are today? Those that have been kept safe by the voice of Jesus in the words that we can read in the Bible. But let's look at how Jesus was the good shepherd to all of us and how we can always look forward to listening to his voice. Well, what did he do? He made that sure that none of us were hurt or suffering. Well, you think about all the times that he healed people. He specifically went out of his way to those that were on the margins of society back then to bring them back into the fold into their communities. He made sure that whatever was hurting them wasn't doing it any longer. Now, how about being fed? Well, we know of the one account, which is in all four Gospels, of the 5,000 being fed, from as little as the fishes and the loaves that a young boy had as his lunch. But he also has fed us with his words. He fed us with his actions of the day. And he continues to feed us when we take communion with one another. The blood and the wine, that is the wine, the bread, which is his body. He continues to feed our spirits. And he feeds our hearts every single time we open up the Bible and read his words that he spoke so many years ago. And like I said, he loved going out to find those that were lost and bringing them back into society, to bring them back into the communities 
that had set them aside for whatever reason. He did enjoy bringing them back in so that they could feel whole and feel like they were a part of something very special. But one of the other things that a shepherd does is make sure that none of the flock are lost to predators. And at the time when Jesus was here and walked the earth with the rest of the Israelites, the main predator was the Romans. They wanted to suppress the people. They were enslaved to, the, to them. But Jesus wasn't there just to get rid of the Romans of that day. He was there to make sure that the people would never be in a position of being suppressed ever again. A quiet revolution was what he began and one that has taken us to today and will take us further into the future as well. He liked making sure that people understood he wasn't there to bring a violent revolution about. He was there to bring a revolution about within each one of us into how we feel and how we treat one another. That's the difference that we have compared to what the Romans were back then. They didn't really care about how they treated people as long as they got what they wanted. And, but what we were taught is that we treat people the way that we want to be treated. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. And is that not more prevalent today than any other time that we've seen in our own history? The virus has caused many things to happen in this world. A number of people have been taken prematurely. Some of you may know people that have been taken. I do as well. A couple of people out of the congregation of High Cross have passed. But I think of the size of our congregation and the amount of people that we know. The number is very small in percentages. But it's still people taken a bit prematurely. But because I know they were Christians, I know they understood the words that we have all been taught. I know they've been brought home. But that's what we have to face today, is how do we let other people know about that sense of being brought home, brought back into the fold, so to speak. As I said earlier, today is a different day than most of us will ever recall. But the one thing that I do look at with this is looking at the fact that we are out there helping each other in more ways than we've ever thought we would ever do. How many people are out there just talking to their neighbor that they may have never even said more than a hello to before? That's the thing that really gets me. And that's the thing that really sets us apart from our days, not even a year ago. We are here helping each other out to make sure none of us are lost ever again. Our time together may be short here in our worship, but what we do in servicing our neighbors by having a cup of coffee over the fence, by joining each other outside on a Thursday to clap for the NHS and the key workers. What are we doing but gathering together as a community and in a spirit and in a way that we haven't done before? And that is what's reminding me about Jesus and his time that walked this earth and what he did to bring people back into that sense of community the sense that we're never alone, the sense that we can count on each other in our times of desperation. And the challenge that we all have today, I think, more than any other time in history, is making sure that our neighbors are okay, that we are out there helping them as best that we can ourselves, making sure that we're making phone calls to people just to make sure 
that they know they are not alone. But also receiving those calls ourselves and knowing that we're not alone. This world is full of a lot of people that have never known what it means to be a Christian, but are acting in a way that Christ would like us to act, the way God wants us to act. So as we come to the end of this reflection, and the challenge to you is to making sure that your neighbors know that they are not alone, to helping each other out where we can by getting that extra bit of food because they can't get out, or maybe picking up their prescription because they are unable. The last hymn today that you're about to sing is, let us build a house where love can dwell. I don't think it's any more important to have that sense than it is today. The house that we live in is the Christian home. It's the house that we built within our hearts. So let us share that with one another and wait for the day when we can bring it all together again in his house. Amen. Let us uh, pray. Uh, as we pray today, let us remember people in our church, in our family, in our communities, and even globally who might be sick, who might be anxious, who might be fearful or bereaved in times like this. Let us also remember that Jesus says in Mark eleven twenty four, whatsoever things you pray for, you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have them. So when we say our prayers this morning, let us say our prayers believing that we are praying to a loving God who hears prayers. Not only does he hear prayers, but he loves to answer our prayers. The prayers I'm going to make today are going to be in two parts. When I pray the second part, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, can you all please answer, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Reason Jesus, when your friends were afraid and were gathered behind locked doors, you came and stood among them. You came to be beside them and you said, peace be with you. You offered signs of hope by showing them your hands and your side. Your presence and your spirit brought them joy. Risen Jesus, come stand beside us. If we are afraid, calm us. If we are tired, bring us rest. If we are fearful, inspire hope in us. Breathe your spirit into us and show us new ways to live. May we continue to learn what hope means in these troubled times. May you be the source of our peace and our joy and our everlasting life. Almighty and merciful Father, who shows his love to all creation, we come before you this morning asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging the world. Lord, in your mercy, we answer, hear our prayers. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray that an effective vaccine might to combat the sickness might be found speedily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the relevant government and health authorities that they might have appropriate steps for the good of the people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray especially for the health care workers that you might guide and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Look upon us in your mercy this morning and comfort us even as we go into this new week, knowing that as you say in your word, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. And now we end our service by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.